Now let's see what it takes to create an enterprise grade OSGI service. Um, so for that, we're going to create a new Maven project. This is going to be a Maven EJB module. And you, as you realize, EJB allows you all those transactional um, security contexts and all of those things, uh, abilities very easily in the Java EE application. Here we will show how all of those functionalities can be easily used by a OSGI client. So click on next here, call this as EJB service. And since we don't need to export anything, click on impl package and finish. So now that we have created our EJB service, in a typical enterprise application, you are talking to a database as well. So as a very first step, what we're going to do is show you the power of Java Persistence API over here and create an entity class. So expand the source packages, right click here, say new, and I'm going to create a POJO class. This will again show you the power of Java EE6 over, over here on how easy it is to create an entity class. So I'm going to call this class as user and click on finish. This is a very simple POJO class. Here I'm going to add private string name, private string password. To this class, I'm going to add a constructor, which is going to take both of the parameters and I'm going to resume my default constructor as well. Then I'm going to generate the getters and setters for both the fields. And so, so far you can see it's a very simple POJO class. In order to make it an entity class, I'm going to add an entity annotation over here. This is all the imports. And then also specify that this actually comes, uh, the table name corresponding to this entity is username. And I'm going to make my string attribute, which is a name, as an ID attribute. So very clean, very simple um, uh, class over here. And let's resolve this import too. And here we're going to add a method, a convenience method. I'm going to use a code template for that, which basically gives you a response if the passwords between the two user classes are correct. So let's save this class over here. And the class looks very clean. Now, in, either, in order for this entity class to be recognized by a Java EE application, we're going to create a persistence um, XML file over here. So, um, right click here. So actually, in my other sources, I go to source main resources, go to merend, right click here, say new XML document. I'm going to call this as persistence. Click on next, take the default. I'm going to get rid of all the generated code for me and I'm going to use a very simple persistence XML fragment. Um, the key thing that you want to notice over here is a persistence unit and then that the Eclipse link DDL generation says drop and create tables. So that takes care of creating our entity class and the corresponding persistence.xml. Now let's implement our um, EGB service. So for that, we right click here, click on new and we're going to create another Java class this time. And the service name in this case is user auth service EJB. Click on finish. And this is going to implement our um, interface from the common package. So user auth service. And I'm going to resolve the dependency by searching the Maven repository comes from our common package and once the is dissolved then you import the package and for the business method I actually have a code template all I say is EGB service I'm going to resolve all the imports over here and as you can see this is actually injecting persistence context entity manager Login method is actually talking to the database and um, even in the register case is uh, adding a new persistence um, or an entity class to the database. So it's a very standard, you know, EJB, very standard persistence classes. So nothing that we have done is OSGI specific. So let's see what it takes to convert it into an OSGI service. Well, before that, let me make this as an EJB as well. 
that's the beauty of Java E6. You know, you tend to forget whether it's a POJO class or it's an EJB class. So let me resolve this import too. And in here, I'm going to create um, in my EJB package. Right click here, say new, and I'm going to create a new properties file. Call it OSGI. And here I have a simple uh, properties file. One more code template. On all I'm saying here is export EJB all. Now this functionality is specific to Glassfish. Uh, if you specify this manifest information, then Maven bundle plugin adds this to your manifest information. And then Glassfish understands that you want to expose your all the EJBs in your existing war file as uh, OSGI service. Actually, this is going to be convert created as a bundle, OSGI bundle. So not not a war file, but all the EJBs are exposed as services in the bundle. Okay, so let's right click here and build this OSGI bundle for us. And let's keep a track on the output over here. Okay, this is complete. Let's look at the generated manifest for us. Expand it in my target, in my EJB service jar, meta in. I look at my manifest information. Here you can see the simple element export EJB all, and that's all it requires really to convert your any traditional EJB uh, uh, and expose it as an OSGI service in an OSGI bundle. So um, we have already built it. So let's go back to our um, Glassfish administration console, refresh the repository, and deploy this bundle.